Hey A Push students, grab your period one study guide from the Ultimate Review Packet and let's review. There are four big picture ideas that you want to remember for period one. First, Native American societies in North America developed unique cultures by adapting to their environments. Examples include the small semi-nomadic tribes of the Great Plains and transforming the land like the Cahokia Mound Builders. Second, maize cultivation supported economic development, advanced farming techniques, and social stratification among Native societies like the Pueblos of the Southwest and the Aztecs in present-day Mexico. Next, the Colombian Exchange brought new crops and sources of wealth to Europe from the New World. This brought positive changes to the European economy, while old world diseases such as smallpox devastated native communities. And lastly, as Spanish conquistadors sought to extract wealth from the New World, they developed institutions based on enslaving native populations, such as the encomienda system. Here's some key vocab words that you want to make sure that you know for period one. Grab a highlighter so that you can mark them up as we review together. And while period one is full of important figures, there are five main characters that you want to absolutely be sure that you know. All right, here we go. Let's start by looking at North America prior to the arrival of Europeans. Anthropologists believe that the Americas were originally settled somewhere between 10,000 and 40,000 years ago. Migrants from Asia may have crossed a frozen land bridge that once connected Siberia to Alaska. On the AP exam, you might be asked about pre-contact natives. These are usually divided by their geographic region and their unique cultures. For example, the Pueblo and the Apache populated the Southwest. They built multi-story cliff dwellings and developed complex irrigation systems to help them grow maize. In the Northwest, natives lived in longhouses and their major food source was fish, especially salmon. And some tribes were known to make totem poles with religious significance. The Nez Perce and Shoshone tribes inhabited this area. And in the Great Plains, the Comanche, the Dakota, and the Sioux tended to live a nomadic lifestyle. This is because they relied on hunting the buffalo in the region, and this is also why they tended to live in teepees so that they could be moved easily. Tribes like the Choctaw, Shawnee, and Cahokia lived in the Mississippi River Valley. Mississippians like Cahokia were known for building large earthen platform mounds. These tribes also developed theocratic village states near the river bases. They were hunter-gatherers, but also relied on agriculture like Three Sisters Farming. And along the Atlantic coast and into the Northeast, Natives were traders, farmers, and hunters. They often built longhouses, lived in maternal societies, and also lived in villages. These tribes included the Powhatan, the Iroquois Confederation, and the Pequot. Most of these Native American tribes were relatively small and semi-nomadic, but the spread of maize cultivation from present-day Mexico into the American Southwest caused Native populations to grow and civilizations to become more complex. There are three groups that you want to make sure that you know from Central and South America too. First, the Aztecs. The empire began as warriors and hunters, but later built their capital at Tenochtitlan that grew to around 200,000 people. They were known for their advanced mathematics and human sacrifices, and their society was able to grow so large because they had a stable food source and maize. Second is the Incas, who developed terrace farmings and a sophisticated network of roads for trade. They also built cities such as Machu Picchu for religious purposes, and they had a stable food source and potatoes. Finally, the Maya. They raised crops, built pyramids and temples, and had complex trade networks that included canals. Their government was a theocracy where the priests were in charge. They worshipped the sun and the moon and developed a 365-day calendar. Let's talk about early European exploration. New technologies that were introduced during this time period allowed Europeans to engage in what's known as the age of exploration. For example, the magnetic compass, which was adapted from China, improved the safety and efficiency of ocean travel. Astrolabs measured the distance of the sun and stars and allowed sailors to figure out their locations. The Portuguese invented caravels, which were small sailing ships that were quick and easy to maneuver and the printing press helped to spread information quicker, increasing interest in exploring the world. There are a few other factors that contributed to this desire for exploration. First is economic motivations, like the quest for gold and access to more land to extract raw materials or grow cash crops. And another economic motivation was a sea route to Asia to get gold and spices. Politically, small kingdoms were united into larger nation states who sought to control trade and bring in revenue. And finally, the marriage of King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella in 1469 created a unified Catholic Spain. In 1492, these monarchs funded the journey of Italian sailor Christopher Columbus, who was seeking that sea route to Asia. As European nations like Spain and Portugal continue to explore the New World, the Pope issued the Treaty of Tordesillas to keep peace between these two Catholic nations. The Pope gave Portugal access to Brazil and allowed them to continue to dominate the West African slave trade, and Spain was given access to basically the rest of the New World. Ultimately, this gave rise to the Spanish conquistadors, who were absolutely ruthless in the Americas. In 1519, Hernan Cortes attacked the Aztec Empire and later destroyed the capital city at Tenochtitlan. 
And in 1532, Francisco Pizarro conquered the Incan Empire. The conquistadors were able to easily conquer the indigenous people of the Americas because they had advanced weapons like guns and because European diseases continued to kill off their populations. They also took advantage of the political instability of the tribes. Perhaps the most commonly referenced idea on the AP exam from period one is the Columbian Exchange. This is the term for the colliding of the old world and the new world that led to the transfer of people, animals, ideas, and diseases from Europe and Africa to the Americas. The old world introduced natives to plants like sugarcane, coffee beans, wheat, and tea, while the New World introduced Europe to plants like tobacco, corn, potatoes, tomatoes, and squash. The New World introduced turkeys and guinea pigs to the Old World, but the introduction of domesticated animals like horses, cows, sheep, and pigs revolutionized the New World. And although Europeans were exposed to syphilis, the impact wasn't nearly as devastating as the diseases like smallpox and malaria on native populations. Many groups lost up to 90% of their populations in what historians refer to as the Great Dying. So remember, the effects of the Columbian Exchange on the Old World were overwhelmingly positive because Europeans experienced population growth because of new food sources and economic prosperity, while the effects for natives in the New World were overwhelmingly negative, with forced conversion to Christianity and many dying of European diseases. The success of early European exploration eventually led to colonization because of the economic theory known as mercantilism. This stated that countries gained power and wealth by having the most gold and silver. Colonies were established to look for precious metals or to gain access to to raw materials and cash crops to increase the nation's wealth. And the goal under mercantilism is to maintain a favorable balance of trade, where a country exports more items than it has to import. All of these resources and new food sources from the New World caused a population boom and increase in wealth for Europe. This led to the switch from the medieval system of feudalism, which measured wealth in terms of land and titles, to capitalism, which focused on expanding markets and free trade. Spanish exploration of the New World created competition with other European nations. They competed for new land and resources, like the Spanish and Portuguese in Central and South America. They also competed to be the first European nation to find the sea route to Asia, where they could have access to gold, spices, and silk. And Catholics and Protestants competed to dominate and convert Native American populations. As the Spanish conquered the New World, they began subjugating natives to make money for the Spanish Empire. But Native Americans attempted to resist. Some would try to run away or to fight back, but this was difficult as European diseases were killing off natives. And other groups would try to form alliances with either Native American tribes or other European colonizers to try and fight back. But most resistance was unsuccessful, and the Spanish forced Native Americans into slavery in a system known as the encomienda system. And the Spanish attempted to justify this by arguing that Native Americans benefited under the system because they were converted to the Catholic faith. But not all Spaniards believed that this system was justified. Catholic priest Bartolome de las Casas and philosopher Juan de Sepulveda held a series of debates in Valladolid, Spain, where de las Casas defended the natives and argued that conversion should be done peacefully. But Sepulveda argued in favor of the encomienda system, arguing that Native Americans were inferior and needed to be subjugated. Over time, it became increasingly difficult to enslave Native populations because they continued to die from European diseases. So instead, the Spaniards began importing Africans because they also viewed them as inferior beings. They called this the asiento system. Since the Spanish mostly sent male conquistadors, they often intermarried with Native women. This led to the development of the Costa system, which established a racial hierarchy with many complex relationships. For example, there was the relationship between the Peninsulares and enslaved Africans. These Africans were forced to labor under brutal conditions of the Asiento system. Or the Peninsulares would force Native Americans to work on encomiendas. And the Mestizo culture was created when Spaniards married Natives. And Mulatto culture was created between relations between conquistadors and Africans. The Spaniards also established religious communities known as missions in the New World. Effects of the mission system include the forced conversion to Catholicism, the growth of towns known as pueblos and even forts for protection from native resistance and mission-style architecture using natural materials and tall adobe walls became prevalent in mission towns. African culture also impacted the New World. Early African additions to life and culture include rhythmic styles of music and dancing, and Africans were skilled at harvesting rice, which became a key cash crop for later colonies. So there's a quick walkthrough for period one. Now that we've reviewed, see if you can answer the practice questions at the end of your study guide. And if you need more help with period one, make sure to check out our timelines and practice sheets. Thanks for watching.